I didn't believe in them. Not at all. I was always taught, you know, once your soul leaves your body, you go to heaven. And basically, when you see a soul, you think of uh, your spiritual being inside. I'm here to tell you that it, they are. They are true. I didn't believe the lady before me. I didn't believe a word she said because I was born and raised Catholic faith and were taught not to do that. But I just thought it was a story. And um, about two days after we lived there, she showed. We had people over and we were all sitting around the table playing cards like we normally do. and. Two of my friends at the same time said, what the hell was that? Excuse my French, but that's what they said. I said, what? And they said, there was something white and cloudy come down the steps. As soon as they looked that way, it went back upstairs. And that's one of the first times. And then after that, we started having little odd and end things go on. She come and visited my son. Evan, the youngest one, and always woke him up and stuff. And he said, Mom, why did you come and check on me? I said, what do you mean? He said, yeah, you come and checked on me and you had a long nightgown and kind of long hair. I said, that was not me. The lady that owned up before us said her daughter's friend had um, been woke up by her before. And that's the same room they were in at the time we moved in is that exact same room. I was kind of, well, not a firm believer, but I was young, you know? It's like, do you believe in ghosts? Do you not believe in ghosts? Are they there? Are they not there? But then when things start happening, there's no explanation for it, you know, like weird things. So then I became a believer. Now I believe full heartedly in them. There was a time me and my friend were sitting in the kitchen and this is when we had heard stories about people seeing like white things in our house and just crazy stuff and coffee maker comes on. So we thought, oh, somebody's making a pot of coffee. But it was kind of weird because nobody was home and there was no coffee, no water in there and it just came on. So we unplugged it, sat there for a minute and it came back on. We dolted, dragged it out of the house. I called mom, she's like, oh, it was probably just an electrical surge. I'm like, mom, I unplugged it. <laughs> like it's not an electrical surge. The spirit wouldn't really let kids up the stairs. It really didn't like kids up in its space so I just always knew to stay downstairs because it didn't like us up there. I just remember feeling like a dark presence something like that it was just like a no-no area just going up the stairs. I just remember like once you got up the one part because they turned so once you got up the first part I would sit on the little landing because it was like a small flight and then like a square and then it would go the rest of the way up and I would sit on that little landing but I wouldn't go all the way up because we weren't allowed to go up there because the spirit said we weren't. We're like, what? She says, the spirit said we can't go upstairs anymore. I'm like, oh, spirit, what are you talking about? So then that's when we knew that she kind of understood it at probably maybe two, maybe. Trinity had mentioned it that she don't want, to, don't want them to go up there. And then there was times that her and her friend were playing on the step and we had a door on that first landing and it knocked both her and her friend down. On Valentine's Day, she was filling out Valentine's for school like they always do. She said, Grandma, I forgot one person. And I said, one person? I said, you got all the aunts and uncles and all your kids. She goes, no. The lady upstairs, Margaret. I don't think we ever knew her name until Trinity said her name. I found out from one of her family members that the spirit had had China dolls up there and the grandkids were never allowed up there. And he was uh, a grandson of hers and he was not allowed up there. 
I was telling him about the experiences we had with her and stuff like that. And he said, you're giving me goosebumps. Stop. That is my, that's got to be my relative, I'll say. He said she didn't like anybody upstairs. She didn't like a messy house. She didn't like animals. All the experience that I have talked to him about scared him and even brought water to his eyes because it was so her, you know, her personality, her, you know, the way she was. She was upstairs 90% of the time were in the one big bedroom where the girls had, two of the girls had slept, is where she kept all her china dolls. If I would go up there, I, I know the feeling that she was around because I would get like goosebumps everywhere and it would be a little bit chillier. Upstairs, you always got a creepy feeling, especially when you went into the back room, not my room, but my sister's room. That room was the creepiest, that one, that, that's where you felt it the most, I feel like, but I was also told the spirit kept all her porcelain dolls up there in that room. So it's like, maybe that was her personal space and she didn't want us invading it, but that was the room that you felt most of the, you know, eerie, okay, I don't wanna be in here. I never slept in that room, I never wanted that room. The, what I remember was when Dreama was living with us, so me and her had twin beds on opposite sides of the bedroom. And I remember laying there and then all of a sudden it was a like heavy pressure on my chest, almost like an elephant was sitting on it. And I was trying to get up and I couldn't move. And I could hear myself yelling, Dreama, like trying to get her attention, but she heard nothing. And she didn't hear anything until um, after the pressure finally got off my chest and I went, <gasps> I could not move my arms. I couldn't move anything. It was just a big, heavy pressure on my chest. And it was terrifying, and I never slept back up there again. If I would go up there and I would feel, start getting goosebumps and feel a chill, I'd, I wouldn't mess up there. I'd go right back downstairs. It'll wait another day. I could always sense her being there then, you know, that she was there, you know, whether she was watching me or what, because I've never seen her spirit, I guess you might want to say. I've never seen her spirit. Just, she just made it known that she was there. I was cleaning out my daughter's bedroom at the time and they collected dolls and stuff, just, you know, kind of like she did. And she had moved out. So I got everything in that room and I put it in a box and boxed it up. And then we, you know, went off to a wedding we had later on that night. I think it was the 4th of July. 4th of July weekend, I believe. And we were at an in-law's house, you might as well say, as my sister's in-laws for a wedding, reception, a wedding, something. And our cousin called. And then later on, we got a call from my, I'll call him my nephew-in-law, saying the house was on fire. I told him, no, you're lying, you're joking, you're lying. No, seriously, it is on fire. If you want your some of your stuff out of the house, I'll get it cleared so you can get your pictures. And we got there and it was on fire. Just got home, got dressed, and was headed to Vonsville to the wedding. And i driving down um, Sycamore Street and I see the fire trucks out. And I was talking to my husband now, but boyfriend at the time. I said, I think either mom's house is on fire or the neighbor's house is on fire. Either way, it's not good because she's an old lady and God knows if she could get out. And that's when he was like, no, the house is on fire. We flew into Grove and by the time we got there, yeah, it was pretty much, pretty much gone by the time we got there. So we went up pretty quick. A group of us was standing in the neighbor's yard and the firemen were up putting the fire out. And when they got to the room that where it started, they were up there putting it out and there was a blood curdling scream, a woman's yell. A couple of our non-believers, you know, that didn't believe that that kind of stuff was going on, um, said, excuse me, I'll say exactly what they said. What the hell? What was that noise? Oh, it was like a 
ear piercing blood curling scream just off the top of like like if somebody was screaming at the top of their lungs and it was creepy <laughs> i can remember looking at mom and being like oh my god and there's like did you hear that yeah i heard that <laughs> it was loud i personally did not hear the scream but i did hear the firefighters coming out asking about hey did you hear that lady scream upstairs and we're like there's nobody in the house After the fire, we put a new house on the property. She's not in a new house that I know of. I, when I go in there, I don't feel her, you know, like I used to, used to be able to feel her presence, you know, like when she was not happy with something, maybe, I don't know, but I would get goosebumps. It was definitely an experience for me. And, you know, the kids that she did bother, um, I mean, you know, they like Trinity and Janet and the ones that she did bother, it was an experience for them. Some people might exp have a scientific explanation for all that, but I don't, I, I, I seen it with my eyes, you know, I've heard it with my ears. When I grew up, I was taught that, you know, those weren't real, but they are.